Hello and welcome to the Overlap Live Fan Debate brought to you by Skybet. It was Manchester City who cruised to victory on Wednesday and here to break down tactically how that game was won and lost is Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher, who also joined by Pippa and Stephen. Gary, safe to say it was a dominant City performance. It certainly was. Uh, billed as the title decided, but obviously there's a few games to go yet. But the big man on the night, the one that, to be fair, Arsenal couldn't contain was Erling Haaland, Carragher, and you thought it was his best performance in a City shirt, didn't you? Yeah, because I've, I've said all season, we know he's, he's breaking goal scoring records, but for me, Haaland isn't just a great goal scorer, I think he's a great player, and I think on the night, I think we saw evidence of that, and, and what I'm talking about is that this situation where he found himself, because a lot of the time, Arsenal were sort of trying to press up, high up the pitch, and it reminded me of a player I played against, who was fantastic for, uh, for Chelsea in terms of Didier Drogba, that thing of bullying a centre-back, and I think it was Holden, obviously, in this position, just get them up here. And if you think of where the first goal comes from, it's actually Haaland finding himself round about the halfway line in this position with Holden. And for me to see him play like that as a centre forward and for City to play to his strengths. And what I would say is City, as we know for a long time, keep the ball and then the centre forward, it's Aguero or Haaland, puts the ball in in the six yard box. And I've felt all season. City could use Haaland more. Yes, his goal scoring record's fantastic, but get the ball into him early, Stephen. I yeah. mean, I don't know if you agree, but for me, that was Erlen Haaland's best game when we saw him actually bullying centre backs, not just scoring a By goal. By some way, to be honest, I thought he was absolutely, oh, he was remarkable. Like, genuinely, uh, the most complete performance I've seen. And it was the fact that he was dropping off as well and being involved. And I don't think there was ever going to be a scenario where Pep was be comfortable in just being a number nine. And the fact that he was getting. Uh, a little bit deeper and if, to be honest I think his touch has improved a little bit already mm. so far compared to early on in the season I do think his previous best game was against Arsenal as well actually away at the Emirates when we won 3-1 because he was really up for that too but it was it was little things like seeing him actually run at people there was a real like fear factor from Arsenal you could tell that they were just terrified of him when he got the ball and running at people but the touch the little the little one two with De Bruyne, yeah, and De Bruyne in that position. if you've got a confident Haaland who's going to turn and run at people and link up play aligned with his goal scoring already it's frightening it's frightening he chose the right team to him I mean I, <laughs> I mean I actually think in Haaland and De Bruyne you, you, you're possibly saying the two best players yeah. in the league in this position yeah. and, and if these two start combining as they have done a lot this season if this is like going to be the situation where you use it and Haaland a lot more with direct passes into him De Bruyne's in that space I think that's a massive problem going forward for any team in the league because I, I just don't know how you would cope with them me being a centre back but yeah. Gary I, I mean just look just at just Arsenal just, just before we move on though that ball gets played from here doesn't it, in this corner yeah. yeah and it gets played up there to uh to Erling Haaland yeah now I, I don't know what you think I mean I played centre half against quite a few times you played it a lot more than I did but when I was playing against a player that was stronger me, which was quite often you know player would be taller they might be stronger I thought you had to do one of two things you either had to as the ball was kicked jump in front and that's where you can sort of slip round them and so that they can't back into you or you think you go touch tight touch tight so he thinks you're going to fight and then you drop off at the last minute and make sure that you don't if you like end up in a situation where you're taken out of the game by that ball there mm. what what do you think holding? What, what do you think holding should have done? Do you think? I mean, I thought he should have been more. People say he should have been more aggressive. I thought he should have been more cute, actually. Well, he could have been both. For me, when you're in that situation and you know you've got a problem when you're on the halfway line, I think as a, as a centre back, and you know the quality around you. So Erland Haaland's there with, with his power and his strength. And again, I, I mentioned Drog because I've been in those that situation yeah. where it's a physical mismatch. You think, how can I cope with him physically? He couldn't cope. Now, exactly what you're saying, they're the two things he could have done. Or sometimes I think, you just give a good give a foul away. Just stop the game. Yeah. Because you don't want space yeah. in behind. They play that little one too. Haaland starts making a run. And also sometimes we forget how quick De Bruyne is. De Bruyne is lightning quick. So that's a problem playing against De Bruyne Apart, with, yeah. His, yeah. With, with his pace. Uh, for me, so they, they're the things he could have done. But for me, in terms of Holden and Gabriel, I, I mean, I'll throw it to you about Arsenal. But as a centre back watching that, I actually felt for them because I don't think they got anywhere near enough protection. Do you feel like it was more of an old school four four two from City? I mean, that that to me felt like City really committing to just letting De Bruyne and Haaland do their thing. Because yeah. usually you see De Bruyne off in the channels, don't you? A little bit more. But this game, it was so central. Like City were really just going through the middle. It felt like they were targeting Holden, yeah. To be honest, I was it felt like they were targeting the defence. Yeah. I was going to touch on that because. Building up to the match, there was a lot of comparison between De Bruyne and Odegaard and everyone was talking about the battle between Martinelli and who would possibly play on the right back, which was Carl Walker. But nothing went down those flanks. No. Everything went central. And when you've got players like De Bruyne and, like you said, Haaland, who can just threaten you and drive at you down that middle, 
they got that completely right. I didn't know what the tactics were for Arsenal, if I'm honest with you. I was watching the game thinking, are we going to press? Or are we going to sit back? And it was very confusing as to what the setup was. And we just didn't, we was, was on the back foot the whole game. So um, the tactics for me were all wrong. We, we came in underdogs, but literally looked frightened to play against City. Well, Gary, yeah. what were they? Look, I, I think that uh, we talked about it quite a lot, about managers who have principles who want to play the same way irrespective of the match that they're in nowadays or the situation, the sort of circumstances. Arsenal, I think we did the stat, didn't we, after the uh, Southampton game. They've started to ship goals over quite a decent period of time. Now, I think it's like 10 games they've mm. conceded, I think 19 Since goals. Since the World Cup. Yeah, they've, they've started to ship goals. When you start to concede two, you know, Southampton score three, Liverpool score two, West Ham score two, even Lisbon, I think, scored two in a game. Bournemouth scored a couple. Yeah. Bournemouth score a couple. Yeah. So you, you're conceding goals against everybody. Forget the fact that ultimately you sort of, you know, you're still top of the league. You are conceding goals. I think coming to, to, to Manchester City in a game like this, I think it warranted potentially looking at the game differently because if you're conceding goals against Southampton and Bournemouth and West Ham, you're definitely going to concede the goals against Manchester City. We have a group, don't we? And I actually just honestly, group I, chat, yeah. we have a group chat. <laughs> just with, me and him. <laughs> <laughs> we have a group chat. And honestly, I saw them in the tunnel and I said, Arsenal are going to have to do very well here not to concede four. Literally, as a f in the tunnel, you just thought they're going to get absolutely battered. I didn't think that really a week ago or a few days ago. I thought it'd be tight. But Mikel Arteta, I mean, look, we see a lot of teams go to City over the last few years with Pep Guardiola. Mm -hmm. And quite a lot of them do this. It's just basically bank up with a four, a five and a one, and they'll leave one up top. And they'll make sure that they make it really difficult. They protect that back four. They go really compact. And that's a very basic way of playing in a football match. But it can be effective. When we were with United and we played against Arsenal, the great Arsenal teams that were better than us technically at times, we would just bank up as a 4-5-1. Darren Fletcher would come into midfield to strengthen that right-hand side where they had, obviously, Henri, Perez, uh, Ashley Cole. We would definitely weight that right hand side with me, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, Bex, and another. We'd pack that side. I didn't see any plan from Arsenal at all in the game to make it more difficult and to stop them. If you like, get to 30 minutes gone where they hadn't conceded a goal, would that have been a massive backward step if he'd done that, Mikel Arteta? Uh, I, I think in the game now, the way we have, the manager we talk about, we always talk about them not changing too much. And I think it's a little bit of a myth because even in this game, you, you could argue Pep Guardiola changed yeah, quite a lot. Pep changed a lot too far. Well, he, he, yeah. He's the kind of manager who does change it for a big game, Pep Guardiola. Yeah. So and Arteta is such a disciple. I was surprised he didn't adapt a little bit. But at the same time, is this team too young and too early on to change such broad principles straight on? Are they not experienced enough to do that? Yeah. Yet? I mean, so what you're talking about is they go a little bit more direct. They play with a back four, which is not what they normally do in terms of possession. So they did change slightly. But it, a lot of the teams now, it almost feels like the... the they can't be seen to be backing down or taking a backward step. And I just think, I, I agree with you, maybe not what we're talking about yeah. here in terms of going right the way back. Maybe, yeah, so maybe, maybe it's up here, maybe yeah, it's a bit what more... I would call a, a mid-block. Yeah, so because as I said, like... when you think of the first goal and where it comes from, Arsenal find themselves on the halfway line. Somewhere like that. But we've always gone into big games. I don't want to pick out a player, but obviously Holden's being mentioned a lot, Saliba's being out. Now, yeah. we've all gone into big games where... Someone in a really important position, and you're playing against their best player, yeah. who's Haaland or De Bruyne, and you're thinking, OK, we need to, we need to help him. him. Yeah. We need to protect him. And I, I actually felt for him, I think he was left isolated, I think he was yeah, left he was. on his own. And that's not a criticism of the players. I think tactically, the way Arsenal were, at times they were pressing so high, Partey was actually leaving De Bruyne and jumping onto some of the central midfield players. And this space in front of yeah. the centre-backs was just, it was too big, and it was always going to be a massive problem. So I think tactically, from that point of view, I think Arsenal did get it badly wrong. I was surprised they were surprised because if you watch City against Bayern, we went quite direct at times. And even mm. at Arsenal at the Emirates, City went quite long ball, yeah. which is, it, it felt like we were going to do that. Um, and it was just Stone was over to Harden or to yeah. De Bruyne. And I don't think it was a surprise for that to happen. So I was just, I was expecting I, something I, about that. As an Arsenal that. fan, you would have accepted, obviously, ditching the attacking principles and the pressing principles for a game, surely. Yeah, like you said, with the amount of goals we conceded in the last couple of games, I expected us to set up defensively. That's why I was confused as to where the game was going, because at moments you saw us pressing, especially for that first goal that City scored. Yeah. And then there were times where we didn't have many opportunities to score, but there was one time that Saka ran up the wing, got the ball in the box, and there was absolutely no one there, because Jesus was all the way back in the this central left midfield where Zinchenko normally That's is. That's Jesus for you. Yeah, yeah and is, he was floating around in the midfield and getting back a lot. And it's like, are we attacking or are we defending? And yeah. I would have preferred if he would have set up defensively because City are always going to score the Etihad and they're and always going to score in a, tight, a big clash like this. So And on the counter-attack. So um, I'm really disappointed how we set up. Um, 
too many goals conceded. At half time, uh, obviously the game. I mean, we all felt the game was done. To be fair, but I, I said at half time, I wonder whether even then he would bring Tierney on as a left centre back yeah. uh, with Gabriel and White and play a three yeah. and play Zinchenko as a left wing back. And obviously then he would have had to have played Saka or somebody as a right wing back. But he still could have kept Jesus, Martinelli, and Odegaard up front yeah. and had Partey and. Um, and Shaka in centre midfield, even that would have meant that you have a three and a two, and then you might be able to more build covered. more covered. Yeah. You might be able to build up a base in the game where you've still got that five four one to defend. And if you get a goal back, you know, any crowd, any team, no matter how <laughs> good they are, when you if you'd have got end, a goal you know? back, no, with, a, a little bit of anxiety because obviously your recent form, like, yeah, 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 yeah we, we turn off after the 80th minute. So yeah. I thought maybe we could yeah, get yeah. another two, who knows, but no, not at the attack. So, I mean, the, the two the two young lads on the night who I think have been leaders, to be fair, this season for Arsenal, um, Martinelli, Martinelli, obviously, here in Saka, that's probably the quietest and most ineffective yeah. we've seen them all season. And what a time for that to happen. But why, why do you think that happened on the night, Pippa? Like I said in the beginning, they just went all central. There was nothing happening down the wings. And I think it's the fear factor as well. I, at the beginning of the game, you could see the fear on the face, as you said, in the tunnel as well. And Akanji, I think one of the first players to have Saka on toast this season. He, <laughs> Saka was really quiet. He didn't turn up. But then, like I said, what, what could he have done when he's the only one getting forward? He can't go and... Well, he can try and go and attack the goal by himself, but it's going to be very difficult when you've got the Diaz. Like, it's too difficult. Yeah. What? Pippa, have Man City got Arsenal on toast now? <laughs> yeah, I'll admit it, they have at the moment. And they, they always would have been. Like, we're the only team that's contested against them this season. So, we're, we're starting to ship goals, the blood's in the water, in the sharks are... Arsenal, is it? It's like 10 or 11 or something like that. What's that? How many wins in a row against Arsenal is it for City now? It's like oh, I don't even want to know. You couldn't win the league I in three months ago. Now, now don't, he's you re -ride, don't you rewrite straight? Gary, 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 what was second month ago doesn't matter. You guys know about it. Anyway, we're going to get on with the fan debate and move over with Josh and the rest of the team.